Welcome to Oracle Code Online. In this session, I'm talking about chatbots in enterprise mobile application development. I will start with an introduction of the topic, which is chatbots, to then go into details on how you build chatbots with the Oracle platform. My name is Frank Nymphius, and I'm a product manager from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In our team, we're building a platform for building chatbots, as well as mobile backend as a service. And the cloud product for this is Mobile Cloud Service, or in short, MCS. This session, however, is purely on chatbots, so sit back and enjoy. My demos in this session are all based on the new platform that we're going to release in 2017. So chances are that by the time that you watch this video, this product hasn't yet released. In 2009, Steve Jobs went on a stage and says there's an app for that. And he said this because he was excited about 200,000 apps to that time that have been in the App Store. And that was two years after the launch of the iPhone, so the first considerable uh, usable uh, smartphone. In 2010, Apple decided to make this a trademark. However, times have changed. Today, we have two million and more apps in each of the stores, in the App Store and in the Google Play Store, and some on Windows as well. So this means there's a lot of competition between apps, mobile applications, to be downloaded to the user's mobile device, be it a tablet or a phone. Now, based on a statistic, the average mobile user has 25 applications that they would download or install on top of those applications that they cannot remove as they were pre-installed by the vendor of the mobile device or the provider. Now, based on this 25 applications, statistics also say that it's 10 that you probably will use. And out of these 10, there are five that you frequently use. And out of these five, probably there are two which are social media. So what do we learn out of this? First, we learn that applications don't make you rich. The business behind it, that is what makes you rich. So an application always supports a business. Social media is a good example. So the business of social media, of users interacting with each other, that's a good business model. And so the mobile application helps that model to make it easy for people to access. If you have a banking business, for example, and you have loyal customers, then those loyal customers wouldn't mind downloading the application, in which case there is no competition to that because the business makes people download the app. For the rest, the competition is on. Golden Krishna released a book on an article in March 2015 where he says the best interface is no interface. What he's basically saying is that we're over-engineering our lives. There are applications out there that, for instance, can unlock the door of a car. The way that it works is that you actually open an app and then you click a specific menu item and that will unlock the car. Now imagine the situation where you come out of a supermarket with bags of food. I don't know how it is for you. My mobile always is in the wrong pocket. So you're doing some kind of a limbo just to get your um, mobile application out of your pocket. And then, oh, it's locked. So you have to unlock the screen. If it's by fingerprint, you might have it easy. If that fails, you have to provide the pin. Then you swipe, you tap on the application, and then probably in the menu, you have to look for how to unlock the door. You can imagine that there would be an easier interface for that. One where, say, a gesture with your arm or with a leg will open up the trunk, or where approaching the car will actually make it pop open. While I don't agree that the best interface is no interface, I would think a simple interface is what we're going for. So we should look in mobile for interfaces that are easy to learn, easy to understand, and that just do the work. And this introduction actually leads me to the topic that I'm talking about and that chatbots fit in, which is conversation. Conversation is the most natural form of communication. And as humans, we practice this for so long. If you go on a conference, on a training, or just if you're in the office, 
Have a look at the people that are holding a cup of coffee or tea. Immediately they start chatting. People who tend to be smokers when standing outside and smoking, they talk to everyone. Yeah. So it's a natural thing for us to have a conversation. It's not a so natural thing for us to work within an application. So the question is, how can we take the most natural form of communication and put that into an interface or use it as an interface that allows us to perform business tasks? Chatbots actually do exactly this. Chatbots are virtual users that are programmed to assist real users on the conversational interface. So here we use a non-technology related specific interface, but we use natural language just to make something happen on a remote server. Now that could be anything. That could be ordering a flight, that could be cancelling a flight, that could be asking for the weather, that could be arranging an appointment, that could be anything. Because chatbots actually, as we will see, can do real work. Chatbots, however, are not replacing mobile applications. They are extending mobile opportunities to the conversational interface. Of course, to some degree, they will make mobile application not necessary for larger parts of your business. So they're extending it, they're simplifying it, and they give you an opportunity to reach out to those users that normally you wouldn't reach. Coming back to the 2 million application in the App Store. Now today, if you have a loyal customer, as I mentioned, they would be happy to download the application. But what if the customer that you're getting into um, contact with is not a loyal customer or is not yet even a customer of yours? So how do you get to these customers? Now, today's so-called millennial generation, they actually don't download a lot of applications. What they do instead is they chat. So they do have a messenger client installed like Facebook or WeChat or Kik or whatever. And they're just texting. They're texting each other. So that's their way of communication. As in business, you have to be where your users are or your customers. Now, apparently they are on a messenger client. So by moving your business to the messenger client, you're extending mobile opportunities and you're extending your mobile opportunities to your business opportunities. It's just a new channel of approaching the modern generation that is more smartphone and tablet oriented than the digital immigrants, would, which I'm a part of as well. So everyone born after the 1987 is considered to be digital native. And now today we have a new generation, which I would consider chat native. So everything they do is through chatting. Chatbots use a very simple interface. It's natural language. The way that you speak, the way that you talk, the way that you text, this is what the chatbot will analyze and will be able to transform into service requests. And then, as I mentioned, they do real work because in the end, they will invoke a service, they will do real work, anything that your business wants to do, starting from selling a product or just providing good service. I guess we all experience a service hotline once in our lives. Now, how does it work? So first you dial in using your phone and then you hear music. Oh, then you hear more music. It's not that that's your favorite music because there was no selection for that. And then you're asked to make a numeric choice. You do that and then you hear more music. And you make another choice. You hear music, you hear more music, and then, oh, you learn that all agents are busy. Oh, you're asked to stay on the line because there's more music. Can you imagine how this user experience can be modernized, can be more pleasant? How about this? Lara Anderson is a sales representative and she made a change in her, her business could be a career or just a change of a position. She needs new business cards. So instead of calling a service hotline or writing an email, she just picks up the messenger and then she starts typing to a chatbot. And she says, oh, I want to reorder cards. And the system will understand that 
voice recognition or natural language recognition and we'll pull up the business card and we'll say okay this is the card that we printed last time do you want to have the same and by the way we recognize that your title has changed shall we update your business card and she just uses one of the select option to go that route changing the title on the business card so the system now again updates the card information with what they find in whatever human resource backend system they have show the new card ask for confirmation ask for the chipping address and then that's it when talking about chatbots there are two type of chatbots as I would see it. So one is what I call bots on rail, which are mainly menu driven bots. This is like the call center structure. You're just being following a specific process. And then there are intelligent chatbots, which use free text and voice. So this means like it's you as the user texting and talking to a chatbot that determines what is the conversation that you will start and not a menu that you press. Let's take the example of banking. There is an app for that, and there are many applications for banking. and Every bank probably has one. Again, not a problem with loyal customers. However, there are customers that don't want to download an application just to get information about the banking account, the balance, or just to transfer money even. Now, some people would say, what, banking on a chat? Nah, no way. Well. Think back, we say it the same about banking on mobile applications. We say it the same about banking on the web. We say it the same about banking and client server. It's all just kind of the way that we look at things. Technology has evolved. Banking on the chatbot is a possible solution. Let me show you that. So we are in Facebook Messenger here. It's a chatbot that we created. Uh, with this banking scenario I mentioned. So to get started, what Facebook wants me to do is just to hit this get started button here, and this will activate the chatbot. So the chatbot is invoked by Facebook and it actually will get my user profile information. So my first name, last name, this is how it knows that my name is Frank Nymphius. And then it processes the first state, which is just to query the accounts that it has about me or for me. And as this is a bot on rails, so a menu guided bot, it then offers me options of how to proceed. So one of the options is to view my transactions, others is to transfer money, and one is to contact an agent. Now, contacting a gay agent in general is a good idea, as bots, no matter how intelligent they are, they may not be able to always solve the problem that people have. So they may want to speak to a real person. If that is on a chat or if that is on a phone, that's up to the implementation. So in my case, what I want to do is I want to transfer money. So a message is sent to the chatbot and the chatbot comes back and says, well, you have two accounts. Which account do you want to transfer the money from? And now it wants to have the IBAN number for the person I want to send the money to. So I could type that message in, or in my case, just paste it in. Again, send it. Now, how much money do I want to transfer? Let's transfer $100 or Euro. The beneficiary user, well, what about Lydia? And description, that is for babysitting. So what you see this chatbot is doing, it actually guides me through the process. So there's not of room where I can do things wrong. So now what it does, just for the sake of um, authorization and um, confirmation, it summarizes all of the information it has, asks if I want to perform that money transfer, and then I should provide a digital signature that I have something I own, so let's make it simple. I provide this and now the bank will send me an SSMS with a code that I will have to put in to confirm the, the transaction. And this is where security really comes in. 
and and this is it. What you also can see is that in a message in Wingo, I can just scroll back and forth. So I could now hit another account and do another transformation. So I don't have to run through the same um, process again. The one thing that I would like to show you is the options I have, because this is simply text and selections, but there's a lot more that I can do on Facebook. And again, the messengers are different here. So if I type in help, then my bot comes back with some options and we put it that it shows you what are the layout options here, because this um, chatbot, as you can imagine, is for demonstration purposes. So I could have things like horizontal cards. Now, if you are a retailer, you want to have products listed here. So in this case, we have the members being involved in building this chatbot. So we can also have attachments. So you could have audio files, video files attached to a message. So that shows you that a chatbot not only needs to be focusing on pure text, it can also send attachments as you would have within the mobile application. So what are the benefits that businesses and developers get out of a chatbot? So first of all, chatbots are highly available, fast and intuitive to use mobile platform for business to consume interaction at a very low cost. Chatbots don't need any kind of training because they're following conversation style that everyone understands. So it's a very easy entry for a mobile strategy. I'm not saying that you should give up on thinking about mobile applications. But what I'm saying is that probably a lot of the use cases that you have that you want to bring onto the mobile device can be done with a chatbot. And a chatbot is really easy to build. Usually chatbots are cloud-based operations. Of course, this depends on what vendor you're talking to. Vendors like Oracle will provide you a platform on the cloud that allows you to build chatbots the easy way. This has the benefit of centralized administration and monitoring, for example. Chatbots are easier to build than apps because you don't have to think about different platforms. You don't have to code for iOS. You don't have to code for Windows or for Android. You just build for messaging client. And the messaging client in the end, so the vendor of this messaging client, Facebook or WeChat, they make sure that they support various devices and um, operation system. So they are cross-platform by design and default, taking a lot of burden from the developer. So you can just focus on the technology of choice, like for instance, JavaScript, if you're a Node developer, or Java, if you're a Java developer. So let me talk about intelligent chatbots. So we've seen the banking example as a menu-guarded chatbot, so a bot on Rails. So let me talk about intelligent chatbots. The meaning of words is really what makes us using a chatbot and what the chatbot needs to do to understand to process on a specific task. So the meaning of words is the art of distilling user intents and data from natural language input for chatbots to invoke actions and to return reasonable responses. So that's kind of the more accurate definition. If you think about language, no matter what language you speak, they're all the same. So they all have nouns, they have verbs, they have adjectives. They do have a grammar that puts this all into a sensible order. They do have a lexicon of words. And the more words you understand and speak, the more fluently you are in your communication and in your thinking. And then there is a context. Now, if I would ask you, what is the highest mountain? Most likely you will all say, well, that's Mount Everest. That's true. But let's see how this changes if I tell you, that next week I'm in Switzerland. Now, what is the highest mountain? So I'm setting a context to Switzerland, and now that changes the context of our conversation to Switzerland, and therefore the highest mountain no longer is Mount Everest in this conversation. So this is what a machine will have to understand. So the way that we do this is by using modern technologies, that's natural language processing and machine learning, and this all kind of is wrapped up in what we call artificial intelligence. So these are technologies that you would use by building a chatbot. 
don't necessarily have to build it yourself, but actually that will be used under the covers. You think that's kind of a big stretch? No, it's not. If you think about Java development, in Java development we have the same artifacts as we have in the language. So we do have classes, which are nouns. We do have methods, which are verbs. We do have properties that are adjectives. We do have a syntax, which is equivalent to the grammar. And we do have a set, a lexicon of commands. And as you know as a developer, the better you know a language, the better the program is that you can write. So we use this concept to program in bots. And of course, we also have instances, because in Java, if you class as an instance, that is a context. So context equals instance. So you see, it's not so difficult really to map the conversational style to a programming style. Now, natural language processing and machine learning, what we don't want to do is this. Oh, Siri, I'm bleeding really bad. Can you call me an ambulance? Oh, from now on, I call you an ambulance, okay? You see, that went wrong. That's not what we want. But what we want is exactly this. And that's a true case from Australia, where Siri really saved the baby's life. What happened is that the baby stopped breathing. So the mother who recognized it just run to the first floor, dropped the iPhone on the stairs, actually hold the baby. And the only thing she could do is to call Siri and ask for an ambulance. And Siri happened to do the right thing. Now, this is an example of how machine learning, artificial intelligence, voice control, chats work to the benefit of the user. And that's what we're aiming for. So how do we do this? How do we make sure that we always get the right response to a question? Let's have a look at the sample here. Transfer 100 US dollar from my default account to Lydia for babysitting. You and I will understand the sentence. The machine has to look into that and has, has to uh, identify areas of the sentence that it is trained on. So the first thing is the intent. Now that's a verb. What is it what I really want to do? I want to transfer 100 US dollar from a default account. This is what we call an intent. To get to this intent, we have to train the machine because the machine does not have any experience. So most of the chatbots, what they do is they get some example sentences or utterances, as they're called as well. And based on these example sentences, they know that when there are similar sentence comes in the future that this needs to be mapped in this case to the transfer intent. So what it builds is what's called an intent model. An intent model is based on an algorithm that takes input data and predicts an intent. And this is how we get to the action that we need to follow. But there's more in this sentence than just the transfer. 100 US dollar Default account, Lydia and babysitting are information within that sentence that you and I would understand immediately. Now the machine will have to be trained on that as well. And this is what we do through entities. Sounds familiar? If you're a Java developer, a C++ developer, or any kind of developer, an entity is a kind of a variable that holds a specific set of information. For transfer, it will need to know about the account that the money comes from and the amount that the, uh, the account that the money goes to. So you're creating entity models. So what will happen is that as soon as this sentence comes in, the system tries the best that it can to get all of the information that it requires for a remote service call out of the sentence. If it can't find all of the information that is needed, of course, it will have to ask. Say that you forget the 100 US dollar. So it will understand that you want to transfer money from default account to Lydia for babysitting, but not how much money. So it will have to ask for that. And this is all that it takes to design a proper chatbot experience. The way that you design a chatbot experience is within a dialogue flow. Now, a dialogue flow is the script that a call agent in a service hotline would follow. So you have a use case and you know that this is information you need. So you have a welcoming message, then the user would provide an input. And then based on that, you will look into the input. And if a specific information is missing, you will go into another state which actually then will ask for that information. If you have that information, you will skip this case. As simple as that. It's like a flow diagram that you can see here on the screen. So let me introduce you to Oracle Intelligent Bots to show you the platform that it would use to build chatbots. 
and you will see how declaratively this is built. In the beginning of this session I told you that I would show demos based on a product that's not yet released. This is Oracle Intelligent Bot Cloud Service, the user interface which is completely in the browser. As nowadays it's quite common that you don't need to have sophisticated development environment so we don't need a development environment for designing chatbots in Oracle Intelligent Bot Cloud Service. You see a couple of chatbots already created on this platform and one chatbot that is a financial bot that's similar to the bot that I showed you and this bot actually is using natural language processing it's not a bot on rails but it could be on rails as you see in the integrated tester I have the ability to display list of values to the user now in this case let's reset it and first let me show you the intents so we have balance, send money, track spending. And for each of the intent, I provide example sentences, the utterances. And you see, there are not many of them, but enough so that I can train the bot, which is by just pressing the train button that would create the intent model. Right now, I don't need to have training here because I didn't add a new sentence. Every intent is associated with entities. So here we have an account type as an entity associated to the balance. If I go to send money, then you see there are more entities to that because there's more information required here. So let's go back to this screen and say, okay, how much do I have in credit card? Just to see what my balance there is. I'm sending this and because it's not missing any information in there, it immediately comes with the answer. When I started this demonstration, you saw that there were a select list. Now, as soon as it couldn't detect one of the information that is required, it will ask you for that and will show you a list of values to select from. But it can do even more. So let me copy this string here. And now we want to go to the intent because we want to see, based on the many intents that I have in this use case, how is the decision process? of the machine learning and artificial intelligence. And you see that this sentence is good for balances, frequently asked questions, transactions. However, balances are 92% score. And for that reason, that was chosen. If that was inaccurate, I would use the same screen to retrain the bot and to add a sentence that it misunderstood. So everything is declaratively and graphic. So we can go to entities. As I said, entities are variables that you hold. And here we find account type, track spending categories. So we see that track spending would be gas retail. And for each of them, I can even specify synonyms so that I have a variety of words that could be used within a sentence. And then it will create the entity model and the bot will understand that. The conversation currently is held in an XML metadata format. So what we see is that right at the beginning, we do um, an intent detection. So that is like the information that I'm putting in as a text will run through the intent detection. It has a confidence threshold, which actually determines what is the certainty for a specific intent um, before it's displayed. Because you always have the option to say, sorry, I don't understand the question, to be polite to the user or maybe direct the user to a human agent to handle the case and then retrain the bot. So a bot is something that you always want to have a look at and train so that it more and more reaches to the confidence threshold that you would envision to be perfect. And the rest is just states. So you have a start balance state, you have an ask balance state. And what you can see is that within the Oracle Intelligent Bot Cloud Service, you work with components, system list to display a list, system intent to do the artificial uh, intelligence on the natural pro um, language processing. The list of custom components is here. So when you register a custom component, and we'll talk about this in detail, then actually this component um, will display its properties, its channels, its supports, and to register a new component, and you can have more than one component service registered, you just go to the component service and 
then you would just specify what is the REST and URI to access the service. And this sets up the system. You also see that there's a channel tab. On this channel tab, you can specify now what are the external messengers, in this case, Facebook, to work with. And then you have general settings, which includes um, the MUX results that you want to have returned by the chatbot. So everything graphically and visual, visually available to you. And you build as many chatbots as you want. So this is the architecture picture of the demonstration that you saw. So kind of the core stone, stones or core functionality modules within the Oracle platform. So there's a channel configurator. And the channel configurator just allows you to connect to different messengers. I might not have stressed the fact enough that there are different messengers on the market, Facebook, WeChat, Kik, Telegram, and so on. They all speak a different metadata language. So you have to apply for that. You have to connect to that. You have to meet their requirements in terms of security, authentication, and so on. So this is what the channel configurator is doing. It could work with text-based messages, but also, as you see on this slide, with voice, hooking up to Alexa or to Siri, or even to a custom voice recognition that you build in your mobile application. Say you have a mobile application, you're a bank, you have a mobile application for your customers, but for students, you want to make sure that they don't have to use the application the old-fashioned way, but just could chat. So you want to integrate voice. Then there is the dialogue flow execution. Now, this is what actually puts the conversation into a runnable experience. We have the artificial intelligence engine. Now, artificial intelligence really is what takes the meaning out of the sentence. And then we do have custom components. Custom components play a key role within the Oracle Intelligent Bot platform. There's an SDK that simplifies the task. And really, what custom components do, they allow you to write the code that matters and not more. There are many examples out there, if you look at chatbots, that just make you doing everything in code, writing kind of the uh, utterances or the training within your code looking in your code to what probably would be the best match. Now, this is all that we are hiding from you, or wouldn't say hide, but take away from you. So the platform actually will have all of the artificial intelligent machine learning built in. And all that you do is you build the logic that is specific to the use case that you have. Now, this could include functional logic or user interface logic. Yeah, All of this, but not more. You just focus on what you want to build, and you build it in a way that is reusable. So how does it work? The intelligent chatbot actually will, as soon as there is a state reached in the conversation that calls out to a custom component, will issue a REST call. Now, this REST call could go to anywhere in the internet. So your components don't necessarily need to reside on the same cloud or host as the chatbot. In our example here on the slide, the implementation logic of the custom component would be written in Node, which is very common these days. If you have Oracle Mobile Cloud Service in the picture, then you have declarative connectors to REST services, SOAP services, integration cloud services, and so on, that make it easy to connect to a remote service to query data or update data. So this architecture here shows you how it works. So a com custom component starts off with a custom component service which can host many custom components. You can imagine this like a package in Java that has different classes and functionality. So the call is made via HTTP into the component service. The component service invokes the connector, gets the information that it needs, and returns. To assist you in building those custom components, at least for JavaScript, we provide objects like a shell, which is this patching between the bot call and the list of components that you have in a custom component interface. And then we have an SDK. Now the SDK, what the SDK really does is, it makes it simple to work with a payload that comes from the chatbot. 
So all of the information that we get out of a sentence will be sent to a custom component to look into that and to operate on whatever you need to operate. And the component implementation, that then is what you're building. That's then the node code that you have to implement your client functionality. So let me show you how the code side of a custom component looks so that you get an impression on how interesting it is to build custom components and how powerful that is. Again, you just build the code that matters, not more. This is a custom component example. As I mentioned, the custom component is exposed as a REST service. This code is written with Node, so it's JavaScript, but Node actually has a module called Express. And this module maps a function, a JavaScript function, to a REST method. So we have a get method and a post method that comes from the bot. The get method is called when you register the component service with the intelligent bot. It will then invoke the shell object and on the shell object call get all component metadata to get a list of all custom components hosted by this component service. So it will provide the name and the required configuration. The post method is called at runtime. It passes the component name as part of the URI and then this function again uses a shell object to invoke the component by the name. The shell object that is provided by Oracle exposes a get all component metadata function as well as the invoke component. It reads its information from a registry. A registry is a JavaScript file that you as the developer create. If you look into the registry, here my component service only contains a single custom component. So it has a name, so prefix with a namespace. And then you use require to look for the JavaScript file. Now, this will be called by the get method when the get method tries to get all components, but it will also be used by the post method when the component should be invoked. So to have a look at the component, here is a city weather component. This city weather component, I actually split this into a client logic part, which is in this file, and a UI part, which I put into a separate file. So here we do have two functions. One is metadata and one is invoke. So the metadata is called with a get request. So it provides the name of the, um, the component, which is weather map city weather, and the properties it requires, a city name, a country name, and what the unit is that you want to provide uh, or get the weather provided in. And then there's a fourth parameter, which is a convenient parameter, which is uh, to pass the open weather map key in. When you work with open weather map, you create an account and you receive a key. And this key needs to be added onto every request. For the invoke, we pass in the SDK that comes with the Intelligent Bot Cloud service, as well as a callback function. The SDK simplifies access to the payload. So here we access the properties that are sent from the bot into the custom component. This is how we get city name, country name, the weather map key, and the temperature unit. We then create the query string. And in this case of this example, it actually uses another SDK, which is a mobile SDK. It uses, however, the bot SDK namespace for that, because in a other section of this code, the two APIs, so the mobile cloud service SDK and this SDK are merged. So this is a way that you can extend the bot SDK, and I did that. So it accesses a mobile cloud service connector, which is a declarative REST service adapter, and then passes the query string as a request. It gets a result back, and then it calls, in my case, render, render UI. Normally, you can straight just print out what the response is. I said, I want to keep this separate. The SDK transition then tells the 
the bot to transition to the next state. So I have a look at the renderer. So the renderer here just writes back information based on the channel that is used. So if the channel is Facebook, then I returning an image. If the channel is only the tester, then I'm happy to just return the text string. So that's all I do here. A look at the SDK. It's a JavaScript object that is provided for you. And this JavaScript object exposes functions that makes it easier to work with the payload that comes from the bot, but also to tell the bot what to do next, to transition to the next state or just stay where it is. So as you can see, for a developer, kind of easy to do. And that is what I meant, like just do the stuff that really matters and not more. So in summary, all chatbots do the same thing. If we look into chatbots, especially if we look into frameworks, they're all kind of serverless compute. So that means there's no on-premise installation required. They all have some sort of a dialogue engine and natural language understanding and processing services. They do provide APIs, application database security. That's common for a platform. They have channel APIs that allow you to hook up to different messenger clients, Facebook, WeChat, and so on. And there are some sort of management interface that allows you to train the system, provide utterances, define entities, and generate the model out of this. So that's typically what a platform will do. There are a lot of handwritten chatbots out there that are advertised by individuals, but frameworks that actually are used with an enterprise chatbot development, they will all provide this. So if they're all the same, then why Oracle? Well, Oracle differentiates in many ways here. First of all, we think on making things easy first. So we think on enterprise great chatbot developments, but then chatbots that are built in a mixed team of IT professionals and domain experts. We think about an open scalable runtime platform that can handle millions of conversations. We think about a platform that doesn't only allow you to build one, but multiple chatbots. Security. We want to make sure that security allows you to hook up for authentication into your own identity management. Facebook is okay for authentication, but what is the trust level that you have between a Facebook authentication and your company? So you might prefer to some point in the conversation to redirect to your own login screen. And this is what you can do within messengers. And that's what we're supporting. We're looking at enterprise integration. So as we go on with that product, we will integrate to more and more cloud services from the Oracle platform and from third party platforms that allow you to have a very easy access and integration from or in your chatbot to those systems. We will provide a very simple bot designer that allows you to build a dialogue flow as easy as possible. And you've already seen that what we have in this early build that I showed during the demos, we do have a very component based approach to building chatbots, which allows you to do reuse on a very fine grain manner that allows you to um, even exchange components between different chatbots. And that allows you to just focus on what matters to you and the business. We provide machine learning with cross channel predictive analytics and knowledge packs. So instead of you chasing down how machine learning works, and artificial intelligence need to be put together with different systems, we just provide this out of the box. So it's all there. It just needs to be trained. And beside of that, Oracle has a very powerful relationship to other vendors, including Facebook. So Oracle differentiates in that we think big. And you know what? If you think big, you can always think small. So we're building a platform that scales for everyone. And this is how we differentiate. So with this, I'm opening up the Q&A section. Thanks for attending this talk. And I hope you enjoyed this session and that you continue enjoying Oracle Code. The remaining time in this session is set aside for your questions.
please use these final few minutes to submit your questions via the Q&A widget. This time is set aside for your questions. Please feel free to use the Q&A widget to submit your questions.
This time is set aside for any questions you might have about this session. Please feel free to use the Q&A widget. There is still plenty of time for you to submit your questions regarding this session. Please feel free to use the Q&A widget.
This session will close in about two minutes, so please use the Q&A widget to submit your final questions now. This concludes this session and the Oracle Code Online mobile track. Thank you for your participation.